style of my presentation is error planning based on the coding output. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, true. Can you hear us? Can you? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, it's fine. <laughs>
segment and operates into air regions. Air regions have the same length and location and are separated by regions with correctly recognized birds. So we have the first air region here. Um, it is um, separated by um, this uh, correctly recognized uh, Chinese character. And we have the third air region here. Um, the correct um, recognized birds are regions as well. And um, yeah, this region here is um, separated by um, this, this um, second air region and this fourth air region. And the remaining um, air regions are correct. Um, and then we can assign them to error categories. <coughs> For example, here in the first air region, we find a search error because um, the um, acoustic model score of the hypothesis was um, worse than the one of the um, yeah, reference. The second air region was correct. We have on a word level, at the word level, the, uh, the same transcription. And um, the third, for the third, um, yeah, error region, um, we played the acoustic model together with other possible components. And as I said, uh, the remaining um, yeah, regions were correct. Um, let me briefly introduce um, BioFit, our new decoder. Uh, in addition uh, to speech, it is able to process other biosignals like muscle activity, motion or brain activity. And in contrast to static uh, decoders, we wanted to have more flexibility and implemented a dynamic decoder. We can do an online uh, decoding with it, and we integrated, as I mentioned, our aeroplane tool into BioFit. BioFit consists of a two-layered structure with four functionalities in C++ um, to be very fast. And we have a more or less user-friendly interface in Python. And um, the tool I'm going to present is also embedded on those two layers. Uh, so based on Chase and Nunchuk's work, um, we defined six error regions and error categories with it. Um, the first is the correct region. If we have um, on the reference level and or on the reference side and the hypothesis uh, the same words in the region. And if we have um, a birth acoustic model on the hypothesis, then on the reference side, um, yeah, we got a search error, which is maybe possible due to early pruning, and we blame the decoder for it. Um, second problem is a homophone problem. This is the case if we have traversed the same states, which means we have the same acoustic models on the reference and on the hypothesis. Um, yeah, but we have um, distinct words in the reference and the hypothesis, and then we blame the acoustic model for it. This can be the case, for example, very often for French um, with A and A, which means uh, one form is uh, from to be and the other is the word for end. And if uh, we have a high language model score in the hypothesis level, then on the um, reference um, we call it language model overwhelm, so we have a bug in the language model. And if uh, both scores, the acoustic model and the language model score, are better in the hypothesis, then uh, in the reference, um, we have a problem with both the acoustic model and the language model, and everything else we put together in one last category. Uh, we do not distinguish between an acoustic model problem, a problem with noise, a problem with a wrong pronunciation, for example, or with stuttering or wrong transcriptions. But we want to tackle those yeah, um, um, problems and uh, distinguish between those problems in the future as well. Um, here is an example from one of the blaming results. We have an, we see an error blaming table here, which gives us an in detailed comparison between the hypothesis and the reference. <coughs> uh, the output is in a uh, CVS file. And we got information about the acoustic model and the language model scores are reference and hypothesis. Usually you see also um, the state, the traverse state sec segments um, in this file, but it was uh, too long to fit on this picture, so I skipped it here, but it usually is there. And we got information about the length and the location of the region. And uh, as, yeah, in addition, uh, in addition um, about the uh, error category as well. Um, as we use um, the negative, um, block-like inputs 
um, as you know, as probability measure, the lower scores are better here in this case. Um, and I will yeah, explain um, yeah, all the information from this table in more detail. You see here um, the beginning and uh, the end uh, frame of an average, not the first origin of the second one and of the third one. We have a word level transcription here as well. As I said, we usually have um, a state level transcription as well. And uh, we have the acoustic model scores. And we have a kind of normalized acoustic model score as well, which is the average acoustic <coughs> model score from the reference here. This is the acoustic model uh, score simply divided by the traverse um, <coughs> uh, frame number. And we also have yeah, information about the acoustic model score. Um, for the hypothesis, which as I said is the result from the undefended decoding, we have the same information. And uh, yeah, from the yeah, error regions here, or in addition to the error region information, we've got hints at uh, responsible error sources. So in this example here, um, we have a better scores on the acoustic model and the language model level in the hypothesis than uh, those numbers of the reference, uh, which means we blame the acoustic model and the language model uh, for these problems. Um, in addition to this uh, first file, we have another output file, which um, represents a table. We call it acoustic model conclusion table in CVS format, uh, which shows us uh, which um, yeah, acoustic models are confused. So you see here, the confused acoustic models. And here you see the occurrence. Um, so we can yeah, sort um, uh, the uh, confused acoustic models by their occurrence and see how important those confusions are. Furthermore, we have information about the average um, acoustic model score of the reference here. And we um, got um, the mean acoustic model score distance which is um, the reference acoustic model score minus the hypothesis acoustic model score, together with the standard deviation of the acoustic model score distance. Um, for example, if we have a very small distance between um, two um, acoustic models, uh, a combination of uh, both models may be um, helpful. And uh, we got information about the total confusion number of the reference model and the total occurrence of the reference model as well. So in this case here, we see that we can confuse, uh, we, we have confused um, the first two models in 100%. So the, the reference model was confused always. And in this, this A here, and this O here was also confused in 100%. And um, yeah, the first <coughs> line, which is an N here, um, this um, N was also confused. So we have different models for the same um, phoneme. And um, this is also a snapshot from um, a system which um, can recognize code switching speech uh, between a Mandarin and English. And in these systems, we um, distinguish between models of the same phoneme if the phoneme is in the beginning or in the ending of the word, or if it is inside the word. Um, and we um, modeled this with, uh, with, with text in the pronunciation dictionary. So with the phonetic decision tree, um, we included to the help of the um, yeah, pronunciation dictionary a question um, which, where it is asked if um, yeah, the acoustic uh, the phoneme um, occurs uh, inside the word or in the word boundary. Um, and in the second error planning table here, we found that um, in the error regions, we had um, on the reference side and on the hypothesis side um, the same characters, but um, differing segmentation. So we also detected a segmentation problem here. Um, this is what I have mentioned, um, that the context decision tree distinguished between the both the word boundaries and inside um, uh, and inside uh, the word due to text in the dictionary. Um, and, uh, therefore, we combined um, 
the acoustic model which we had um, distinguished before, um, those within a bird or inside a bird, and th uh, those acoustic models um, at the bird boundaries. And we um, corrected the segmentation problem as well. And with the, those uh, two actions, we were able to reduce the mixed error rate by more than 12% here on the, on the um, yeah, test set of um, the semi corpus, the portrait in corpus. Mixed error rate uh, means here that uh, we measure the Chinese characters and the English word in person equal measure. Okay, um, let me conclude uh, this talk. Um, I have presented an aeroplane tool which is embedded in our D Cobra BioKit. It uh, can segment utterances into error regions and then compare the scores of the reference in the hypothesis, acoustic model scores, and language model scores. And we, we also have information about um, the models and the traverse uh, state sequences. Um, we assign error regions to error categories. We are able to um, distinguish between uh, six error categories so far, but we intend to um, explore more categories. Uh, those um, error categories gave a starting point for error investigation. And uh, our model confusion uh, table showed us uh, problematic acoustic models, and with the help of those, we could um, combine acoustic models and improve the overall um, system performance. Um, so our toolkit is um, useful to improve individual recognition systems. Uh, what I haven't mentioned here is uh, that it also helped us with the implementation of our decoder. So we had a bug um, <coughs> with a language model look ahead initially, with the first implementation. And with the help of this toolkit, we were able to find that the scores are not correct here, and that we um, yeah, may, may uh, enhance um, the language from look ahead. Um, and future work will also include further model dependent analysis of um, the errors. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, just, just use it like that. So, 
I'm looking for an example, but there are homophones, you know, uh, where the reference has two or three words, okay. and uh, the hypothesis only one, one word. Yeah. So it's like the same string of phones. But the, right, right. The same, the same models have yeah. been traversed, or the same phase has been traversed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Other questions? Um, have you, uh, have you taken the terms? In fact, uh, it was coming from the room session you dictionary when you analyzed the scope of the acoustic models. Um, how I take this into account? Well, um, from a bad pronunciation dictionary, I got bad um, acoustic models, but I cannot blame so far with that tool um, if it, we have acoustic models because you know we distinguish maybe too many phones or some uh, phonemes or something like this, or if we have pronunciation errors. I'm actually working on pronunciation dictionaries and to figure out if there is much a good consistency and so on um, inside that. But um, our toolkit cannot claim it or, or has do not have this detailed claiming um, right now. But yeah, we have to to take them and look into the, the dictionary. To one tweet, I was coming from the dictionary. As I said it to the acoustic models. That work? Sorry? Uh, when you, you get some new words which comes from the... Um, dictionary, I got an error that it, it, it comes from the acoustic model. Yes, um, I have here this last um, error category which says um, it, Must be a problem with a mispronunciation, or yeah, yeah I throw everything together so far. Yeah. Yeah. Is this system available? Um, not, not yet. <laughs> I don't know what the plan is right now. As I mentioned, I, I wasn't involved in this work, uh, but I think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not <coughs> so far because BioKit and Cobra is not open source, and, but we are thinking about making it open source, and then it may be, because it is a part of, uh, of BioKit, it should be open source as well. So maybe, yeah.